Hagen. I don't mind the King's move. The double can go suck a fart. All right. We've got a Aussie arm wrestler on. I thought it'd be interesting to sort of find out a little bit more about him and, yeah, some questions that I sort of thought would be interesting. So pretty much first one, where did Reddy Bang come from? Reddy Bang! The number one arm wrestling catchphrase in the world. I'll tell you what, first of all, uh, very excited to be on your show, Kyle. Really enjoying uh, what you've been doing with with your with your stuff. Yeah, that great interview with Lockie not that long ago, uh, before his match with Ryan. Uh, just interesting stuff. It's a it's a bit a bit different. It's not your stock standard show, which I you know, which is what I'm all about. You know, being different. But where yeah, where trying. did the, the where did the ready bang come from? It's it's real. Real simple. So the the origin of it all is um, like growing up. Uh, I'm in Melbourne, Australia. I, you know, for those watching, I'm on the opposite side of the country to Kyle, and we love our Aussie Aussie rules football. And and growing up, I really loved um, any sort of contact sport, whether it be fighting, boxing, whatever. And there was just something when all me and my mates were all together. There was just something that would naturally happen, whether it's rugby or footy or something like that. And two people just collide, bang, just <laughs> like that. And so when it came to doing the commentating for arm wrestling, like getting into that was an, uh, another fun story. Yeah, it just, you know, obviously it was the, it's ready go, you know, and, and you start it and just naturally went ready, bang. I was commentating a match. And um, I believe it might have been Devin versus Todd Zilla very early in my Instagram days. And I just did it. And I didn't notice till about five or six videos later, I was doing it every time going ready, babe. Yeah. And then I'd wake up one morning and someone's, um, you know, film themselves doing it, you know, on the other side of the world. And then I went back and I was like, oh, is, is he taking the piss a bit? And I went back and watched the last few videos and I was like, Oh, I say it all the it's time. There. So, it's yeah, stuck. so that's where the ready bang came from. It's, uh, yeah, and it's, it's caught on like wildfire. I'm very, uh, very humbled about it all. I think that's probably where you're best known now, isn't it? The ready bang. Everyone knows the ready bang. So. Yep, absolutely. They've all come, they've all come in like I'm very, uh, very, very fortunate, very happy, very lucky. You know, wake up in the morning and there's a few people tagging and they try and do, the, the Aussie accent or they just, you know, they, they, will, they will send me anything. People have sent me videos of their dog throwing up saying, can you do a ready bang over this? Oh, you know, God. people send me some some weird stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, that's probably, you know, if I stop doing this tomorrow, uh, I've left my mark on the arm wrestling world. Everyone, um, yeah, is thoroughly enjoying yeah. the ready bang. That's great. <laughs> Worked well for you. <laughs> so was arm wrestling sort of like when you found arm wrestling were you instantly hooked with it or did it sort of grow on you it was a it was a bit of a loved it put it on the shelf for 30 years so oh. being born in 1984 there's only one way you love arm wrestling and that is the greatest movie of all time Cole. Over, the over the top <laughs> that's right for all you people that have not See that movie, you do your homework, then you come back and apologize to the Aussie arm wrestler. Then after you watched it, you come back and thank the Aussie arm wrestler <laughs> for watching the greatest movie. But that's, found that movie by accident. Huge pro wrestling fan. When I was like seven, eight years old at the video store, I show my dad, so that, you know, I noticed Sylvester Stallone from Rocky and Rambo. And I was like, oh, he's in a wrestling movie. My dad's like, that's not wrestling. That's arm wrestling. <laughs> Didn't believe him. It said wrestling, on, you know, with my limited literacy skills. And yeah, just watched it. And I was like, this is an absolute ripper. And, I, and always, always watch that movie uh, growing up. It was just always, I haven't watched that in a while. Whack it on. You can always watch it. But then growing up, it was basketball, took over my life. Pro wrestling took over my life. Did that for a few years. Um, Aussie Rules footy took over. And then I was probably, a, oh, I reckon, oh, 
what am I now? 37. So I was around the 28 to 30 year old mark. It was coming on our cable TV. So Foxdale for us, whatever it is around the world. And oh, I was like, oh, that's cool. And started watching it, thought, thought nothing of it. More years went past and then started watching it a bit more. The WAL came out and that, that was the, you know, pro wrestling meets arm wrestling, that entertainment yeah. aspect, which I am massive on. I mean, that's my whole gimmick. I mean, I'm not a very good arm wrestler. And then from there, it was bang. I was working late at night. And I used to look after people with intellectual disability, working late at night, got to about two in the morning. I was like, I was wondering, I had no footy the next day. It's like, I was wondering if there's any arm wrestling comps nearby or, or, you know, down the track that I can at least book in and go and watch. WAL Oceanic Qualifier was on the next day or the same day at lunchtime. Messaged my brother, said, we're going. Pulled Brett Coots, my very first <laughs> match ever. Stood about a uh, foot from the table. Next time I get a hold of that footage, I'll um, I'll show everyone. Uh, but for me, it was the community. It was the guys there. We had got spaghetti, my brother and I, spaghetti arms. Did your brother compete as well? Yep, he jumped in. We're, we're, uh, we're straight for the deep end, uh, me and my brothers. Yeah. We're not trained for a while and give it a go. Someone puts us up. You want to have a boxing match? We'll fight. You you know, right, do this arm wrestling. We'll do it. But the the everyone there, like I spent some time with Brett afterwards, Tim Gatsby, Alfred Corker, Andrew Lee, and no one fobbed us off. No one shushed us away because we were jobbers, because we were just garbage arm wrestlers. Everyone was like trying to help out. So yeah. then, yeah, so I was like, once my other sports finished, because my body's cooked, once those sports finish, I'm going to jump into arm wrestling. And it was late, late 2018. I started training and yeah. Right at the I'm, start I'm of hooked. COVID. So you've kind yeah, of come yeah, at a I've bad time a bit, in a way. Betty, oh, well, yeah. A, a bad slash good time. Yeah. Like late 2018, first super match was Arnold's 2019. Um, so I had my first super match there. And then everything, you know, was training, having some super matches at, at the hop where I train. And then, yeah, I was getting Nothing. ready to actually present with Travis Bajan at 2020 Arnold. Oh. And then the world shut down, which then built the Aussie arm wrestler. So it was a, 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 yeah. a catch-22. Really. The Aussie arm wrestler still would have happened. COVID just gave someone, gave everyone a laugh when the yeah. world needed one. And do you um do you have plans to sort of try to compete at a high level, or you're just more having fun and doing the commentary well, sort of at stuff? At the moment, like I need two hip replacements, left knee needs a clean air, chronic tendonitis in my left Achilles, can't feel it, like numbness in a couple of my toes, lower back issues. So I love competing. I I will always compete. I'll always compete. Will I try and beat Kyle at state WA state titles and things like that. So long as I'm improving, I don't have huge aspirations to be a gun arm wrestler. It helps. It will help my profile. No, I'm, you know, here's uh, Aussie arm wrestler doing predictions and the bloke can't even beat people in his own garage. So I'm always training. I like the concept of keeping fit, uh, playing sports all my life. I love to compete. But I don't have goals written on the board. Be number five at states this year. Be number yeah. four in Australia. My goals are elite commentating. Yeah. I, I want to sit there when they're doing King of the Table. It's like we've got to have Neil pick up and we've got to have the Aussie arm wrestler. Because yeah, that, that's what yeah, I want. Yeah. Yeah, so that's – oh, mate, it, it would be a dream. Everyone knows that's the goal. Uh, very fortunate enough, uh, the time of filming this, you know, um, uh, Ryan Bowen's looking after me. You know, I know he's not many people's favourites, but he's looking <laughs> after the Aussie arm wrestler. Uh, he's, he's always been good me. to me. So. Yeah. And, but, like, uh, you know, all expenses paid trip. And, you know, I'm commentating the arm fights that he's got in his pay-per-view and then commentating the turkey event 
with him. So, yeah. So, uh, dreams to be... I, I oh, Look, I like to compete. When I lose, I get frustrated. I hit the gym harder. Uh, you know, more table time. But, yeah, no aspirations competitively. This sort of work, I, I want elite level status. Yeah. This is what you more want to be known for over the arm wrestling. Yeah. And 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 it all changed. It all started just a bit of fun. It was my brother that actually changed me, the, the middle brothers, three of us, I'm the youngest, middle brother Ryan. And it was him that kind of swayed it. So I originally started like an arm wrestling channel to what is it, you know, uh, record my progress from one nationals to another, competed at 2019 nationals. And I was like, I'm going to show everyone the journey of an arm wrestler, blah, blah, blah. And then my brother messaged me, he goes, why don't you commentate? You've commentated your whole life. Like, so you've actually commentated other sports? So I've always, well, I just, I just talk. Oh. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm sure you've got a million questions and I just won't shut up. No, no, it's fine. I talk. I love talking. I love entertaining, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, trying to work at, at radio station. You know, I could be sitting there watching the basketball with some mates and I'll do my own call of action or watching the footy. So I haven't officially commentated other sports, but that's what yeah. what I enjoy doing. That's my, you know, that's that's where I thrive. And yeah, he goes, you, you need to start doing that. There's like, I don't have the equipment. Um, like, hopefully I might sit down with my wife and we'll sort it out, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he sends me a message. Four minutes later, did this while taking a shit. And he's literally done a voiceover <laughs> of a... Oh, I've just got my camera. He's literally done a voiceover of um, like a WAL match. I think it was Paul Lynn. And chucked it on Instagram. And he was like, people want to hear this. They want to hear this. And I was watching, watching it. And I was like, yep, okay. And then I did one off the cuff. Um, Does he still like, have that video? All, being, sorry? Does he still have that video? Yeah. Can you, can you uh, upload that and give, give us a look at what, <laughs> what yeah, started it? <laughs> I reckon, yeah, I reckon, I reckon he's still around. I'll definitely find it. But he did that, send it to me, and then I was doing more analytic. Oh well, if you look here, and Kyle Howard has just come in and he's he watch him. He's actually got a pronate <laughs> through here, and he's got to sit on, you know, um, Brock Lewis's bicep, and that's how he's going to get the pin, and you know, that's how it goes from there. And then I did one comedic line. Um, try, I can't remember the match. The one comedic line and it just blew up. Everyone was just like, that's hilarious. And I, I like to think, <laughs> I, I probably laugh more at my jokes than anyone else does, but I like to be an entertainer in that aspect. And that's where the, the whole funny side of it came to it. Yeah. So has your channel sort of grown faster than you're expecting or, or you're not really expecting much at all? I wasn't, I wasn't expecting much. I was not expecting much. Uh, I was like, oh, I'll see if I can get, you know, a couple of hundred Instagram followers. And then suddenly um, Jeff Hale messaged me. He goes, oh, man, can you do one of my matches? This is hilarious. My wife and I watch it every night. And I was like, what, man? I, I, I watch you on the TV. And then Tom Holland messaged me. He's like, dude, you know, this is so funny. If you can do a Tom Holland match, I'd be, you know, I'd be greatly appreciated. And then for the the channel growing, I was just like, it just started off as a hobby. It started off as a hobby. And then suddenly Tom Holland's come on the show. Paul Lynn's come on the show. Because I was doing the same as you, Kyle. You know, I said, I can host a podcast. I can I can make people laugh and, and ask far left questions. And then suddenly, yeah, and now it's got to the stage where I'm very fortunate enough where the majority of people are now asking, when am I coming on your show? Yeah. You know, so I, I'm very, very fortunate to have that sort of luxury. So the way the channel's grown, yes and no. You know, I, I'm big with this YouTube thing. Stay in your own lane. Focus on what you're doing. If you start comparing yourself to other channels, you'll lose your mind. So... Some channels skyrocket past me, and I'm cool with that. As long as the people are still genuinely entertained. Like, yeah. so far, it's been going two years, and they're not like, 
oh, you're just repeating yourself. Oh, you've said that before, you know. So the it's it's firing and it's got it's it's going a lot better than what I thought. A lot better. That's good. Mine's yeah, mine's slowly growing. I mean, I I did it more as a confidence boost for myself than anything. So I thought if anybody ah. joins on and wants to uh because I was I'm always been a pretty sort of shy person, so I kind of did it as a way to put myself out there a bit more and gain a bit of confidence, but I think it's worked. So so far. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have noticed you're a shy guy, mate. No, from, from always, this, not at all. Always been pretty quiet. So yeah, this is pretty out there for me. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. That's I mean, you're very knowledgeable about the sports. So, so I love it's a brainer. If you if you if you if you're confident about uh, what you're talking about, then then you've got no problem. It's yeah, it's uh, the the channel's going the channel's going pretty well at the moment. Uh, with anyone else's dream, of course, I'd love it if it pulled in a, a part time or a full time wage. You know, that'd be great. But that's not what I'm focusing on. Once I start focusing on that, you'll see my channel decline. You know, mm. sometimes I'll put four, five, six, seven videos out a week, and sometimes I only do one or two. It's yeah, just a matter of you know what it's like. You've got a young family, just yeah. trying to find time. To, oh, to yeah. do this to do this hobby so especially i like to train pretty much every night too so it's like do that videos kids it's like oh so much to do <laughs> and then you got to punch in your 10 hours a day at work yeah. to pay for all the bills yeah it's oh it's absolute mad madness but i'm very lucky very very lucky mrs aussie arm wrestler was uh, was still is you know so supportive of this you know fun yeah. little story she wasn't doing too well in 2020. Uh, for those that don't know, Miss Ozzy Arm Wrestler uh, was battling cancer, not dampening on her, just showing the support. So she yeah. spent the whole day at chemotherapy and I had a podcast set up with uh, Michael Todd, very lucky. And I got my times wrong. And I was like, oh, we're driving home. My poor wife, she's been sitting in the hospital all day. She bloody got no hair and you know she actually looked pretty sexy bald i'm sorry i think she just might pick you there cole in the in the baldness there yeah, it's gone but then, <laughs> <laughs> but then from there she was just like i told her i said oh when i get home i said i've just got to call someone i've got to um cancel a show and yeah my wife was like you're an idiot get up at 2 30 in the morning do the show i'll be in bed i'll be asleep it'll be fine just go Go do the show, and yeah, she's a she's a genuine genuine rock star, and it makes it. And I'm sure you're the same. You know, if you've got your family behind you and they're backing you to the hills, I mean, my wife's trying to make me quit my full time job yeah, yeah. so I can just sit That's here great. and make arm wrestling content all day. God, if my wife said that, I'd be like, done. All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no chance, but <laughs> nah. <laughs> So does Mrs. Ozzy arm wrestler like arm wrestling as well, or she's just tagging along? Mrs. Ozzy arm wrestler uh, loves that I love arm wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll she if I sit there like I, I just can't put over like how genuinely awesome she is. So like if I sit there and go, oh, can we just watch? an hour of arm wrestling on this TV, she'll just, she'll just say yes. And, and she'll get involved and she'll start talking about it. She comes on the show a few times uh, and help out. But yeah, she won't. She's only ever jumped on the table once, won two bronze medals. Yeah, <laughs> I heard that story. Which is, uh, which is hilarious. Um, pulled twice, lost twice. And she won arm wrestling medals before I even had my first super match. So uh, yeah, she, she loves it. I love it. She loves it that uh, she loves my passion. I'm very passionate about life with anything. Oh yeah. I love people. You, you can I just see love, that. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, I'm just always up and about. And if anyone caught the 24 hour live stream, it's not, this isn't uh, like a fake personality. Like I went the whole 24 yeah. hours up and about, you know, having a bit of fun. So yeah, she's, she's great. She'll, uh, she'll, yeah. If I want to show her something, She'll watch it, but she's not going to uh, voluntarily <laughs> pop down and <laughs> yeah. jump on the table and all that jazz. It's, a, it's amazing how entertaining that 24-hour stayed. Like, I've listened to the whole thing now just at work and that, and 
it wasn't really have any dull points. It was yeah, pretty good pretty much the entire way through. So obviously got good support uh, there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was uh, it was all like there's parts of the 24 hour podcast. Miss the IMS was giving me the old the old uh, foot rub and things like <laughs> that. But that was that's what I was trying to go. I was just like anyone can come on. I just wanted to see if I could do it. Just wanted to see if I could sit there and sit me sit me a little room here and and bang on about arm wrestling for 24 hours. But I think once I got people on, they didn't want to leave. So yeah. anyone would jump on and they're like, oh, you know, I'll help him out for 15 minutes. And then yeah, I wanted to build hours. atmosphere. It's like, this is the place where you, this is where you got to be. This is where you got to hang out. And, you know, if you, if you jump off the show, you might miss Neil come on. You might miss Monster Michael Todd or Derek Smith, Uncle John. You might miss those guys. And, and yeah, heaps of people coming on. Uh, there was a couple of oddballs in there, but uh, I, I didn't mind. Um, the messages I was getting afterwards from people just being appreciative, you know, so like you would have fans of the sport come on the 24 hour podcast and I didn't boot them off because Marlon Klein Smith come on the show. You know, I didn't boot them off because yeah. Neil come on the show. I was just like, hang out, come hang out. And that was that was the the goal, and and it makes makes me very very happy in, in inside Kyle that you're saying it was you know there was no really dull bits because oh, in I my mind it. I was uh, uh, at times I was struggling to be like okay I'm a bit tired I could go to bed but I was like just show everyone show everyone that was a that was more of a platform to show people I'm not a one trick pony. I'm not just a ready bang and a funny catchphrase. I can go. I can be oh, your yeah. play-by-play guy, or I can be your color commentator guy. I can do. I can do both. And I just wanted to show everyone it doesn't matter if you know you're a fan of the sport or you're top tier of the sport. I'm coming for you. I've got questions for you. I'm going to keep you entertained. Yeah, no, it was good. I, I love the long chats because I just put my earphones in at work and just listen to it all day. So. Obviously, that one broken up into eight hours each was good. I pretty much kept me busy for a few days. So, I yeah, wish more. Yeah, I wish like, more people would do like two to four hour long podcasts and it'd be perfect. I love it. Yeah, it's it's really hard in the in the YouTube world because you you're such a a niche audience because early on yeah. I would have guests on the show and I was going an hour or hour and a half. And if you're wanting, you know, the views and and things and people to stay engaged into your channel, you need to you need to break it up. Your YouTube audience has a very short attention span, yeah. so you have to more or less go. Okay, here's Kyle Kyle and the Aussie arm wrestler talking about state titles. Bang! Here's Kyle and the Aussie arm wrestler playing playing a game and things like that. And you had to break them up in videos. Yeah. So yeah. So Maybe for that's the genuine, something to look at for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the genuine fan like you that just wants to just pop them in and just listen to a couple of people yarn and, and shoot the shit for a couple of hours. Yeah. Um, that's what I've been looking and maybe looking to expand um, to go on something like Spotify or oh, yeah. one of those radio things. So when I do have my hour two hour yarn with anyone, well, then I can put the long version on your Spotify's and things like that. And then have all your highlights and timestamps and everything on the, on the YouTube channel. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. So what's your favorite style of arm wrestling? Do you have a favorite to watch or to do? I like winning. Winning would be my favorite (laughs) style of arm wrestling. I hate losing. Winning's my favourite. Uh, I'm. Do you better, like if uh, two guys are kings? Movies or kings? <laughs> are you oh, a fan of that? Wow. It just reminds me of uh, Dumb and Dumber when <laughs> you know Lloyd's just crook and he's ready to throw up because he's heartbroken. I don't mind the kings move. The double can go suck a fart. Not interested <laughs> in that at all. The the double is just it's disgusting and. Ah, oh, look, it's uh, you, you, we could go on for hours about <laughs> about the king's move. I I don't mind it because it's in the rules. It's in the rules, and the actual visual. As long as the guy's not down too low, the visual of someone holding someone in a king's move actually looks cool. 
So if I'm if you're in the King's Move, Kyle, and I'm actually holding you, I think I look boss. Yeah. I, I look I look real cool. But uh, of course, when you're watching it, you know, two people stuck in a hook. That's always the more entertaining aspect. I love watching for me hand and elbow movement. When I watch it, so yeah, two people might be stuck in a hook. You know, the bite, sweat everywhere, and veins popping out, and just yeah. looking pure masculine that looks cool but when, whenever i watch i'm more studying i'll be like oh my god i can't the adjustments I and nudged his thumb there and he's just got full control or oh i notice this what why did he pinch why did he put his elbow to the back left of the yeah. pad and then i'll watch that and watch that again so look hook hooks just look cool i'm a top roller only because i'm weak so that's that's what you learn when you first start, and I've just been able to to gauge that. I love I love pulling back when I arm wrestle. My goal is just to get you. I have a relatively good lat drag, so I just want you on my side of the table to give myself yeah. any sort of chance of winning. Do we have any uh, any spoilers for people you've got coming on your show? Any big names? Some spoilers, hopefully not this weekend, uh, not this weekend, next weekend. I've got about a 98% confirmation, but Marcio Barbosa, oh, nice. all, uh, that big staunch looking son of a gun who's got muscles on top of muscle. Oh yeah, he's crazy. Neck. Yeah, we've, uh, we've been just trying to work out some times to get in on the show. So hopefully the it'll be the 19th hour time of life, Saturday week. Saturday week uh, will be big, big on the show. And then from there, um, Jeff Hale was supposed to come back on. He was going to come on again, but he uh, recently just had a baby. Uh, I might be pulling someone out of the dead. Might, I might be a bit cryptic with this one because I've got to <laughs> confirm it, but I might pull someone back from the, back from the, the outskirts. They've had some time off. I'm sure you can all guess. Yeah. Uh, hopefully get get them back on the back on the show. Starts um, with a D. And just, and, <laughs> what's that? Does it start with a D? <laughs> with a D? No. No. Oh, not who I was thinking. Or not who I was hoping. No. <laughs> who, who were you thinking? I was thinking Danny. You got Danny. You finally got oh, someone's oh, got him. No. <laughs> no. If oh, if I ever got that magical unicorn, there would be like that would be tight lift, and I would just absolutely bombard the arm wrestling world. <laughs> I and many others have tried so so hard. We have offered. I've personally offered a thousand dollars. Oh, jeez! To have him on the show. That and would that would surely be a viral video. That would have to go viral, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, it would be. It would be absolutely bananas. If that got on, I I would be close to a million views. That would be my first video uh, talking with Presidential Phil, and he just doesn't nudge, just doesn't yeah. want a bar of it. He recently, the only uh, update I have on our our arm wrestling unicorn is after the twenty four hour live stream, he had table time with Phil, but no phones, no no footage. He's radio Jeez. silent. And yeah, and oh man, if I got that guy on the show, I mean, he's only said about eleven words in his life, so that's. Uh, I reckon I could knock knock that out to 14, 14 15 <laughs> yeah. words. If anybody if can get him to it. talk, I'm sure it's you. Oh, I would <laughs> poke and prod, and I'd get the man. I'd uh, yeah, I'd get him chatting away and whatnot. It'd be hilarious. He's just yeah, he's. Probably number, he's in my top three people I'd love to have on the show. And if you had a, say, an invite to a live match, super match, do you have two people you would like love to commentate for? Oh, oh, so in the present or in the past oh, anybody any two arm wrestlers if you could get them together and commentate a match with them do you have two that you'd you'd love i i would love and i don't think i've seen any 
I don't think I've seen any footage. And if anyone watching this has seen footage, hit me up. I'm sure if I put it in the Google machine, it'll come up straight away. But I want to see prime Travis Bajan versus prime Andre Pushkart. If I was picking two arm wrestlers, I want them to in a left arm fuckery. I love my left arm <laughs> arm wrestling. Love it. Needs to be better, more, it's more entertaining than right hand. But I think those two, if I'd love to call a match live, I think the entertainment aspect of Travis talking, fighting for position, Andre was just an absolute brute. Just an absolute brute force. The way he could just, you know, he was arguably the, the number one arm wrestler in the world at one stage. And yeah, we all know, unfortunately, what happened. But yeah, I just wouldn't mind. Yeah, I think think those two. But you could play matchmaking and you there would be hundreds, hundreds of matchups. I would love yeah. it. But that is probably the first one that comes to mind. You'd think that would be a fast match because both those guys were just insanely fast off the go. It'd be I don't know if I, have they ever I don't even know if they've ever versed each other left handed. Yeah. I don't it know. would just be I don't know. Yeah. Two speed demons just smashing into each other. I don't know. It's oh, <laughs> it would be a high speed car chase gone wrong. That would be sexy. That is our arm wrestling sexified. I think that that's yeah. just superb. That that would be the that yeah that would be the match. I mean, there's a billion others. Yeah, um, no, any, I'd, I'd love to see a prime Richard Lapkeys versus a prime Scott Norton. Uh, I, I want to see some footage. Because I'm a pro wrestling fan, uh, ravishing Rick Rude was a champion arm wrestler. Can't see any any footage of him pulling, but yeah, I want to see Lincoln Hawk defend his title. You know, I, I want him back back on the table. Which, uh, 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 yeah, I want to see Sly back on a table big time. Yeah, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Over the top two. They need it. They need a sequel. <laughs> they need a sequel. They need to do something. Maybe do it on left arm. <laughs> Mate, I know, I know a guy that could play the role to perfection <laughs> when it comes to left arm. So I'm a left arm superstar. Love my left arm. I, Speaking of left arm, has anybody made big offers for the trophy yet? Yes. Yes, they have. I've been challenged by a lot of big people. There was... One guy, one guy was hilarious. I had, I had a random dude. He was like, if I pay for his flights and pay for his accommodation, he will pull me for my trophy. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Uh, the highest at the moment, I'm trying to think of the. There's two gentlemen. There's one from Bulgaria. Cannot, I cannot remember both of their names. I'd have to find the messages. One from Bulgaria and one from the States. And if both offered a thousand dollars jeez that's yeah. crazy They're, isn't it a thousand dollars they said they will get over here and give me a thousand dollars but I'm and just, can, can I you just put an aussie arm wrestler mask over brett coots and he'll rock up to defend oh. it <laughs> mate that would be that would be un, <laughs> unbelievable I, I think i mean we could we could work something here <laughs> are you trying to say that i couldn't win kyle is that what you're trying well. to say I don't know. They're a pretty big arm wrestling <laughs> group over there, aren't Last they? Last time I checked, Kyle, I am the reigning. <laughs> oh, what is this? It's the actually a nice looking trophy. The trophy. Where did this come from? <laughs> the 2019 Melbourne Cup, 80 to 95 kilo. Left arm, third place champion. This is the most sought after. Everyone, everyone challenges me for it and they just think, oh, because you challenge me, it'll happen. Like even Todd Hutchings has challenged me for it. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, stack that fat cash. The, the moment I decide to put that on the line, I reckon that could be my super. I reckon I could retire. And is that going to be a, a big build up? You need 12 months to prepare for that match and get on all oh. the pancakes and... <laughs> oh, not, not, a, not a chance with, with that my uh, my wife and I are expecting our first child mid-year we want to have more kids I'm not getting on any <laughs> pancakes that's that's for sure um, look if I ever want to enter the pay-per-view realm 
I'll challenge some people. I don't, I don't want it. I don't want to put it up. If someone put up like significant amount of money, I'd have to, yeah, I would have to have a, a, a probably six months to train to give it a to yeah, give it a fair it. crack because because this you got to understand is a massive investment. So if someone puts up say five thousand dollars and I take the match, well, I want to win. Yeah. So I can have another five thousand dollar match <laughs> and tell everyone that they can't can't beat me on the left arm. And then yeah, but, imagine if you won it, then the price would just keep going up, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, that's well, that's how I would that's how I would approach it when I finally uh, put the trophy up. Is uh, like a business investment. You got to understand. You you say it, uh, and that's probably number two. Uh, going back to your first question, number one, my mark on the arm wrestling world is ready bang. That's the Aussie arm wrestler. That's the catchphrase. I think this is number two. I think this is number two. This started off, fun little story. My first ever podcast uh, was with Blue, actually. And I just thought, wouldn't it be funny just showing off um, my, tra- you know, oh, here I am, I've got national champion, you know, world stage puller, state champion, rah, rah. And I'm like, yeah, but I got this. <laughs> I'm not one of these bad boys and things like that. And um, my, my brother, once again, messaged me straight after the first podcast. He was like, yes, yes, show everyone that trophy. So now, like, I might have to go back and just get everyone's reactions because you're sitting there and, and you know, I like to give big elaborate introductions and I've got Dave Chafee there. And then you see him just look at the camera <laughs> and they give the old, is this guy serious? Like, <laughs> you know, you know, and showing John Brzezink the, the cup every single time whenever I do a live stream or have someone on there, this bad boy comes into play. It's going to end up like the legacy hammer. That'll be the left-handed legacy hammer, legacy cup. <laughs> hey, you, you, you are, you're on the money, Cole. You are on the money. That's exactly what is going to happen. This thing is just so magical. It is just unbelievable. The power. I mean, I gaze at it almost with the same excitement when I gaze at my wife's pregnant belly. <laughs> That's how important this thing is. And yeah, I just... I, I love it. Anytime I'll jump in like a like an arm wrestling chat. Everyone, when are you going to put the trophy up? Yeah. I'll challenge you for the trophy. I'm coming for your trophy. And it's like, well, well, you just need to get that checkbook out there, young son. And, and we'll go from there. Even um, on the 24-hour live stream, young Jamie Barrett from Queensland challenged me for the trophy. I was like, no, we can have a match. I don't think you got enough pocket money to put up for this bad boy. So do you have like a favorite channel that you watch probably more of than any other? Oh, a favorite, a favorite channel. There's a lot of good ones at the, for me, you've got to bring something different. That's why I like your channel. You've got to, I, I, I quite enjoy when um, Uncle John does his smaller videos. We have a killer relationship. He is the Canadian version of me. We got together once and a billion similarities uh, that we have. For me, I don't have favourite channels. You've just got to hit me with, with something. So my, my big thing on, on YouTube and, and all the arm wrestling channels, we don't have much time. So why should I be watching your channel? Yeah. Why should I be subscribed to your channel? And that's what I tell anyone that gets into the YouTube game. They, you know, they start a channel and they're telling everyone, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel. Why? Why should I subscribe to your channel? I'm subscribed to all these channels over here. I don't get much YouTube watching time a day. Tell me why. Why you subscribe to the Aussie arm wrestler? Because it'll be the most unique and entertaining way you'll ever watch arm wrestling. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Guaranteed entertainment, guaranteed laughs. That's why you should give up your time and watch and watch me. So I like quite a lot of channels. I'm subscribed 50, 60 channels. Jeez. I don't watch every single video. I will uh, look, I'll sometimes and, and support the consistent ones. And I might leave my laptop on the kitchen bench for a couple of hours and queue up everyone's oh, videos. Yeah. So they get the views and the watch times because I like to try and support as much as I can. But I I could have 
a favorite, you know, got a great relationship with Blue, but then I might be like, oh, I haven't got time for that. I haven't got time for that. Bang, he took me on this one. I'm yeah. watching it and, and things like that. So, yeah, I've, I have favorite moments, probably not favorite channels. Yeah, fair enough. I've actually got a question that Brock wanted me to ask as well. Ah. So I, I messaged him yesterday and just said you were coming on if you had a question. And pr- the only question he came back to me with is, who do you think in your mind is the top five in Australia right now from what you've seen? Top five. Top five in Australia. Yeah, well, it's really hard because we've just been so non-existent in, in the arm wrestling world. Where, where do you go? The, my, my hardest bit is like, uh, I was lucky enough to have Ben Carroll on the show. Is he still active? Is yeah. he still pulling? Is he still looking? Because if he's not, that changes everything. No, that you guy's know. in as good form as he's ever been in. Yeah, like he's strong as, like, you know, he's number one, number two for me. Uh, going back and forth, you, you've got to put Lachlan up there. I want to see... I want to see Ryan Scott bounce back. Um, I really like the way he goes about it. He had that slight hiccup against Ryan um, when he was supposed to pull Lockie and things happened. And, you know, so I still rate him very highly, even oh. though even though he got beat. So he probably still sits in my top five. Well, last time Rick I gripped Coop. up with him, he felt like pretty ridiculous again. So I think he's been training pretty hard. I think he wants revenge as well, so. Good. Awesome. Good, because, yeah, uh, Australian arm wrestling needs the milkman. Uh, oh, yeah. Needs Ryan Scott. He's always been uh, cordial with his time. Um, I'd love to have him on the show and have a bit of a chat. He's, yeah, anytime, like, he's he's been in Melbourne, you know, he hasn't gone, oh, who's this dude? He's all, You know, I've asked questions. He's oh, always yeah. giving me some time. He's a really nice guy. So he's in it. Brett Coots from Melbourne. Um, I just, I, he just, Brett Coots, I love the guy, but boy, oh boy, does he annoy me. Does he <laughs> frustrate the Jesus out of me? He could arguably be the number one puller in Australia. Oh, yeah. You can make arguments for him, not a problem. I just want him to take on some of those matches. I want him to pull Ryan Scott, Ryan Bowen. Lachlan there. I'm happy to get some sponsors and and try and put some money to make those matches because uh, Brett pulled the other day. He pulled um, Andy uh, at Garage Wars. Yeah. And from there, he, he still looked great. Still looked great. You know, uh, his left hand is probably number one in Australia. Oh, yeah. I think there's no doubt about that. Yeah. But, you know, I'm a big fan of the left hand. But he's right, right arm. You know, he's definitely top five. And then rounding out f- rounding out the fifth spot. Now that's a hard one if you don't in like don't include Ben or if you do include Ben. Uh, because what have I got? I've got the two Ryans, I've got Lachlan, I've got Brett. And of course, Ben's up near the top if he's still competing. If he's not, there's that next tier level that I want them all to have matches. And that's, I want like a four-way between Mario Tambakis, Jordan Davis, probably Fatali uh, from Queensland. I'm not sure if he's there just yet. He's strong. Yeah. I think the other two might have him. And yourself, Kyle. I want oh, you geez. for... <laughs> In there uh, to have an absolute battle, to have an absolute war, to go from there. That's when when it comes to the to the heavyweights and to position where the next um, the next tier of your five to eleven type scenario, five to eleven, five to twelve. I mean, there's plenty plenty of good pullers. We just need to spend a bit more time getting it in. Yeah, but yeah. If, it, it just depends. Whoever stays the most active, I think within those top five will be number one for a while. You know, if Lachlan still continues to get stronger in that, he'll be unbeatable at the top. If yeah. Ryan Scott can make this awesome comeback, 
he claims the number one uh, spot again. And, you know, Ryan, Ryan Bowen didn't look too comfortable in the heavyweights. So arguably, you know, he becomes top five because he could possibly be your number one middleweight in Australia. I don't think yeah. anyone's touching him oh, no. from 90 kilos. Where does Brett sit with his weight? You know, he likes, you know, he competed under no, under 100 kilos at last nationals and became national champion. He didn't take on the heavyweight. So, yeah, it's a very, a, a question I could talk about for bloody 15, 20 minutes. Easy. Oh, no. five. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah, anytime you slot them, you're like, ah, oh, but hang on. And you could pop him there and, and him there. But yeah, I couldn't put him in a definitive order. But if Ben Carroll's still pulling, Lachlan, uh, I still think Ryan Scott still got what it takes. Uh, Ryan Bowen, did I say that? And Brett, Brett. Brett Coots would, would probably be my top five. Um, unfortunately, I don't think Danny's trained enough and he hasn't competed. So oh, he'd be number one, wouldn't he? UAL 2019. He's, he's pulled the pin there. So there's just so many that the problem is, and for everyone that, that lives overseas that watches this, the problem is there's not many people in Australia and it's too big. Yeah. So wherever you are around the world, think of flying for three hours, four hours. That's if I want to go have a beer with Kyle. I've got to go fly left yeah. for three, four hours. Now, if you think where you are in your part of the world, you know, if you're in Europe, you're going to five or six other countries and you're able to go and pull and all have these massive matchups. Yeah. You, know, you know, even in Asia, you'll hit four or five other countries. But here in Australia, you know, it's three hours to get up to Queensland and see your Ryan's, your Lachlan's, your Jordan Davis and things like that. Yeah, airfares always aren't cheap as well, are they? Especially from WA, it's, it's a bit of a pain. That's what's yeah, always so been yeah, my you, problem. You, you need to do something over there and just knock down the prize. We can fly everywhere else real cheap, but any time you can get to get to Perth. I, I remember once it was actually cheaper. At one stage, why was it? Had something to do with the footy. Had something to do with the footy. And it was cheaper to fly, I think it was to Thailand or to Bali, yeah. and then to Perth. I was up for the grand final. Directly. I think so, yeah. yeah. Mad, madness. Pure well, madness. Yeah. I went to the uh, the West Coast grand final when they were over there, and they do the same thing for us going there. So I paid like bloody 1500 bucks for an airfare or something. It was like crazy when it's normally, uh, what, five, 450, 500 maybe? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, That's God, crazy. just ridiculous. Yeah. It was worth it, but because they won. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's always handy. All right. So that's pretty much all I've got. Uh, one more question. So I know you like to play that game when people come on your show. So I've kind of come up with my own for you. Yes. It's the best. It's the best game. <laughs> it's the best so, game. I love it. So it's going to be retire someone, work with somebody, and no more YouTube for somebody. And you've got oh, Neil Picker, Brian Bowen, and Uncle John. Oh, <laughs> wow. Work, collaborate, retire. No, what was and, no? It was retire one from basically, obviously, everything to do with arm wrestling. Work with one and then no more YouTube for one. So the one that was with no YouTube can still arm wrestle. They just can't do any more YouTube. Or any of those social media platforms, really. Okay. So I picked three guys that I think, yeah, should be a bit tough to. So I'm going to. If I'm getting rid of one on, on YouTube, Neil Picker. Oh. Getting rid of the man because then I become number one. <laughs> then I'm number one. I'm your go to guy. Podcast commentating, I'm your man. I love Neil. He's been nothing but amazing with his time. But it's time for the for the young the young buck to really take his spot on the on the throne. Then if I'm if I'm going to work with someone, working with either of those two is is great. So I'll, I 
They both they both just flow. What was the other option? So I've got rid of one. So you've retire work with and no more YouTube or no more social media, I guess. Oh, okay. I'm going to oh, okay. So you've got to retire either Ryan or Uncle John if no yeah. more YouTubes for no more YouTubes for Neil, but to not pull anymore. I'm going to work with Uncle John. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to retire Ryan because then he can still annoy everyone with his with his channel and he can still do YouTube. So I'm, I'm retiring him. There's no more pulling for him. He can't fly anywhere anyway. <laughs> basically semi-retired. I'm working with Uncle John. Always have a lot of fun with him. We do a, we do a separate channel together in the pro wrestling world. And then I'm claiming my throne because you've allowed me to retire. <laughs> I, no more YouTube of the great Neil pickup. Awesome. I kind of, I wasn't expecting Neil to be uh no more YouTube. That was a <laughs> bit of a shock. I'll, I'll still call him <laughs> and have video chats with him because uh, he's the man. Uh, I really, really just really enjoy everything he does. And then every time that he's come on, just, the one thing that that uh, makes it really happy for me is when we go back and forth with banter and things like that. It just flows, and I'm just like, why aren't people like pairing pairing me up? Why yeah. I just need just give me one shot, one shot. I almost the only opportunity I missed from COVID to work with Neil was WAL. I was uh, ready to go. Steve Kaplan had slid into my DMs, as the young kids say, sent me an email, really enjoyed the work that I'd done. And he said he'd love me to come over and, and you know, trial it out. And they were thinking of doing like a WAL after dark because early on, I, you know, everyone loved all the swearing and things like that. But then when Steve got in contact with me, I was like, he was like, oh, yeah, we might do you an after dark thing, you know. <laughs> and and from then, from that moment on, I went and showed everyone that I'm like the swearing wasn't my gimmick. I'm I'm the gimmick. I can I don't need I'm not a swearer anyway, and I need to go from there. So that's probably the only one thing lockdowns and all that stuff me up because I would have had an opportunity to either call the action on WAL or ha or be the host of WAL after dark or after hours they were they were pitching. Yeah, no, it'd be good to see you two team up. Maybe he could get you to an arm wars, and when he's in a, he could put himself in a match, and you could commentate his match. <laughs> yeah, well, well, Neil, like when things get a bit better, he wants to have an arm wars in Australia. Oh yeah, jeez. And then that's that's when we'll work together. He says I'll be his, I'll be his guy. Uh, the the that one there because there's no point me. Yeah, like flying me over to the UK at the moment because he's got it all sorted. It's all fine. So he said when he does an arm wars here in Australia. Um, but the, the the and but for like core sports and everything, the the one thing that I get really excited about, yes, I haven't been picked to be on the king of the table, but my name's getting thrown in the conversation. Yeah. But you know, it's it's hard. You know, do we want Neil pick up and the Aussie arm wrestler or Michael Todd's available? And you know, You've got a 15-time world champion. You want to kind of hear his thoughts type thing. But, yeah, just, people... Just not his heavy breathing. Those... Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, that, was a, that was a fun tidbit. Um, they, he blames the, the pullers. Yeah. So, apparently, they had microphones on and things like that. We had a bit of a laugh about it. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just people power, man, with anything. That's how... Anything has come to fruition here with the Aussie arm wrestler is just people power. Is people just really, you know, either supporting me or they hit up anywhere and everywhere, you know. Um, Engen has told me that, well, like in no fewer words, that, you know, they're going with Coach Ray because he, he'll be there and at the event. So, yeah, you know, but like people are just throwing my name out there constantly, constantly. And if you throw it out enough times, people people listen. And they'll oh, take yeah. they'll take notice, just like with anything. So when I oh, I keep bumming me bloody thing. 
when I keep promoting the trophy. Now it's the most <laughs> sought after trophy in arm wrestling. But yeah, and that's going back to, to the start. That's yeah, that's just that's just the goal. That's the goal. That will always be the goal uh, at this stage of my life. At the moment, I am having the most fun when it comes to this arm wrestling journey. Never in my life would I be able to meet so many awesome people, not just overseas, but, you know, uh, for those that don't know, Cole and I have never met. We've never met and we're just shooting the shit, having a laugh. So that's, for me, I think is just what has just been unbelievable about this whole journey. And if it stopped tomorrow, I'd be a very happy man. It's not going to stop tomorrow because I'm (laughs) going bang this year. Don't worry about that. But it's just, yeah, it's just what it is. People power has been amazing. And that's that's what will get me into that uh, echelon of calling it a king of the table or or an arm wars or something like that. Awesome. All right. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. I think I've pretty much asked everything I was kind of wanting to. So, yeah, thanks again for your time. And, yeah, hopefully big things for you this year and you can get your 10,000 subs and, yeah, make it a full-time, oh, full-time it'd be, thing. It'd be amazing. And thanks heaps for having me on. It was a lot of fun. Uh, always happy to help out whenever I can. And anyone watching, go, not only do you have to click the subscribe button, you should have already been clicking it, <laughs> but tell all your mates as well. Just share it to a few people. Help Kyle out. He puts in the effort. He does his homework. You've got to understand. And that, uh, which makes it easier for guests to come on the show. I mean, I'm, I'm going to talk as much as I bloody can with any question, <laughs> but really if, uh, you know, and I think more, especially more Australians should realize uh, they need to get behind you and just show what, uh, what an awesome job you're doing. I'm trying. Hopefully it'll get better and better over the, the course of everything, but yeah, I think it's going all right so far. That's going great, mate. All right. Too easy. Like I said, thanks a lot. Give us a ready bang to finish. Oh, oh yes. All righty. This one's for you, Cole. Warm it up. You've got to <laughs> see Cole Howard is at the middle of the table. He is ready to go. Those fingers are locked. Ready bang. <laughs>